Y'all know what it is. <laughs> this is Tom Loeffler, repping the People's Champ, Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. All right, Tom. Uh, Just showed you, up with my towel. You, I know, by the way, we don't plan this, everybody. Even though, like, okay, so Dave's got the official Triple G, right? Yeah. And I've got the, the official Triple G hoodie, which uh, Abel Sanchez gave me before the Lemieux fight. Yeah, that's old story. And I've got the, I got the bootleg. I got the bootleg. Uh, that. Yeah, you might have to confiscate this. Oh, I like that one. That's a, I know. That's, it's, a, that's a funny one. This, this one gets the double take. Like, what? But, uh, all right. I, I want to talk to both of you. Uh, your impressions of Golovkin's close but unanimous decision over Daniel Jacobs on fight night at the Garden. All three of us were there. Obviously, you were there, Tom. You're the promoter. Uh, and your impressions after watching HBO's broadcast last night? Um, I thought it was, uh, I thought Gennady had won the fight on fight night. You know, I could have seen 7 5 8 4 on, on the replay last night on HBO. I, I really couldn't give Danny more than four rounds in the fight, just uh, watching the slow motion, how clean the punches were, things like that. But, you know, you got to give, you got to take your hats off to Danny Jacobs, the performance that he put on. He was a big underdog. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's the only one that's been able to take Gennady 12 rounds. Uh, some people uh, put on, uh, you know, they wanted to say like how Golovkin's face was marked up afterwards, but then they, you know, it wasn't. They, Danny's eye was pretty, uh, pretty swollen up uh, at the end, at the, at the 12th round, and and uh, he went 12 hard rounds with with, uh, with Gennady. He was uh, the physically bigger guy, but uh, you know, I, I just think Gennady did what he needed to do, plus the knockdown. It, uh, it, it was a great night overall. It was, uh, you know. How do you feel about the live gate? The, the crowd that was assembled there and the, the merchandise sell. It's the biggest live gate we've ever done for a Triple G fight. I mean, yeah, almost 4 million? 3.7? 3.7 million, yeah. And, uh, you know, that had a lot to do with Danny. He has a lot of fans, especially in New York area. He had a lot of fans coming uh, to the fight. Uh, the merchandise, we broke the merchandise sales again for Madison Square Garden. That was a big statement last time for Lemieux when Triple G, out of all the great fights that have been there, he broke the this merchandise record for any boxing event and then right. we'll do that again this time it just seems like so he broke his own record his from October 2015 yeah. yeah all the people coming over people are asking about June Kazakhstan how how firm does that date look how solid does that potential fight with Billy Joe Saunders look and um People are asking, "What are your thoughts about?" I thought these are easy questions. What Oscar, De, what Oscar De La Hoya, you know, his 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 recent comments saying like, "Well, you shouldn't take that fight," or it it, it would jeopardize or potentially jeopardize the Canelo showdown in the fall. Yeah, it's always been Gennady's dream to unify the the division. That's what we've uh, said all along. It was so hard to get the champions. You know, whether it was uh, Felix Sturm, whether it was uh, Sergio Martinez when he was a champion. Yeah, and those are several years of you know, Gennady's prime chasing, chasing that. Yeah. Those guys, yeah. So, um, you know, so that was his goal is to fight the champions. Um, if we can do a fight with uh, Billy Joe, you know, we'll try to do that. I've been talking to Frank Warren. Um, it didn't work last year when we wanted to do it. Uh, but, but you believe Saunders has found his pin? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see if we can. And maybe, uh, we maybe can enough courage. Yeah. If we can make that fight, and then you know the discussions with Canelo. You know, people ask me how does it look with Canelo, and and uh, really that's a question for Canelo and for Golden Boy. If it was up to us, we would have done it last year. So if we can make this person, this guy, Smelodies, is. But what does he think of Oscar's objections to a June fight? How hard is Oscar actually objecting? I think people are reacting to headlines and not reading the actual yeah, stories, more, but whatever. Yeah, I think that's more headlines. I mean, they'd like yeah. to promote it, but, uh, I mean, clearly between a June date and a September date, mm -hmm. there's enough time to uh, to promote it. Uh, this is uh, probably uh, the biggest, if not one of the biggest fights in the sport of boxing. Um, so, you know, it'd actually be nice to have uh, a long uh, lead-up time. But, you know, the, the flip side of that, it's hard to then say, okay, and I don't fight, and then if something happens with Canelo, if he hurts his hand, if he... He could have you know, a tough a fight with decision. Chavez Jr. That if, could be a grueling physical fight. If they want to do a rematch, and then you're, like, throwing off the schedule again like we did uh, last year. So, you know, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how realistic uh, both fights are, and then, you know, make the decision what's the best uh, direction to go. And the Saunders fight, if it happens in Kazakhstan, it's, like, early part of June. Is that correct? Yeah. So, okay. So, so you have the rest of June, you have all of July, you have all of what August. What we're hoping now is that people see that uh, Gennady didn't have uh, continue his knockout streak and actually think that they Right, he's not a killer anymore. Now he's safe. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> now he's easy work, Tom. So you, have, you, have, you don't have it's to worry always, about that. It's yeah. always easy to make fights with guys that you know can't hurt you. So um, hopefully uh, other people think the same way. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, you know I, I, I'm looking, I, I wrote this, Tom Loeffler joins Chicago Schwartz. 
<laughs> Spell check, Dave. You're so you're not you're no yeah. longer Coach Schwartz. Chicago Schwartz. You're Chicago that's Schwartz. That sounds like an old school that's fighter's that's name, man. Nickname. I love it. Let yeah. me tell you what I think. I think Triple G is gonna fight Saunders. Yeah. I think Golden Boy is not gonna do that fight with Canelo and Triple G. I think they want to wait longer because father time, that's what they're banking on. I think what's gonna happen is they're hoping that the, the Chavez fight's close and they're gonna have a rematch. And if it's not close, they're gonna fight Lemieux. And so what I would- I keep hearing people say that, but Tom, what do you think I of that? I mean, doesn't that, isn't that kind of crazy? Cause Lemieux, yeah, I would favor Canelo against Lemieux, but I wouldn't be shocked at all if Lemieux turned his lights out. And I mean, and it's not, it's, look, he, yeah, and, but he's not a big star. Not, he's not, not he's not the attraction that, that Golovkin is. When, when, I mean, when you, we, uh, did the Lemieux fight, the it's high risk, low reward, Dave. And that's no, not I what think. you do with a, with a, a Mexican superstar who happens to be like the, the biggest attraction in North America. The interesting thing about Lemieux, though, is he also skipped the IBF way in. So, so <laughs> and he held the IBF belt, didn't he? He, he was the IBF champion. So <laughs> Wait, how did he do that? I didn't know this. I didn't even remember this. It yeah. was an eliminator fight for other uh, organizations also. So it's okay. definitely a big... Oh, you're fight. talking about with before Stevens. fighting Stevens. Stevens. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was my point. You saw the result there. He flattened, uh, flattened uh, Curtis Stevens. Came in. Yeah, he it's put a, on like, uh, what, 18 yeah. pounds? He was a big guy, too. I mean, it's people. Cute. All these, everyone's bigger than Golovkin. People underestimate the way Gennady was able to outbox him. People thought, oh, the is just a regular guy, but he, he, can fight. he can fight. He's a big puncher. He's a big middleweight, and uh, uh, he's a dangerous, a dangerous guy. <laughs> guy says, uh, don't take disrespect from Oscar and Canelo. <laughs> Triple G has a 40% value. Triple G has plenty of options. <laughs> A lot of well, managers well, out there. Well, the options aren't coming up now. I mean, uh, <laughs> Ramirez is fighting April 22nd. Bob has said he wants to do that fight. I mean, there's a lot of different options out there right now. That would be at super middleweight yeah. for uh, Zerto Ramirez's WBO title, correct? Maybe Carl Froch watches the fight and, and still thinks <laughs> he's too big and too Come strong. On. After the nose job, he's coming back? Come on, man. <laughs> what about the rematch with Saunders? I mean, with Jacobs. With, uh, Jacobs. Oh, I mean, that was. Uh, That's out there now. It, it's out there. Uh, I don't think it's a media rematch. Yeah. But right. Uh, certainly, uh, Danny, uh, like I said, he fought a great fight. And uh, if we can do, uh, you know, if it makes sense to do a rematch down the road, I think uh, it makes sense. You got to give him a lot of respect. Uh, the main thing is that, you know, the way he conducted himself throughout and his team throughout the whole yeah. uh, negotiation or the uh, promotion of the fight. A lot of guys, you know, they get a big payday and then they're like, okay, I'm just going to focus on the fight. I don't care about marketing the event. But uh, Danny really did a great job. He uh, gets it. And uh, he's a likable guy. He, uh, classy, yeah. genuine. Yeah. And his both. team was great. Yeah. I mean, the, the, his Rogier, team is genuine and classy. Chris yeah. are incredible. I yeah. thought uh, Jacobs had a great camp. Yeah. Really good camp. Yeah. I think he showed, had his best camp. It showed so. in his performance. Yeah. I mean, getting knocked down, uh, getting up, and then continuing to box, uh, you know, strong rounds all the way through the 12th yeah. round. Was, and finding uh, his legs and finding shape. his rhythm you know, and I, finding his confidence. Yeah. When I was going there, I thought Jacobs was just trying to survive. But when I watched it, uh, the replay last night, I, when he got knocked down, I think he got a lot of confidence. He knew he could take his punch. Mm -hmm. And then I thought he did better after the knockdown. And I, th I, I was really impressed with Jacobs. I mean, I thought, you know, Triple G won. But I thought Jacobs did really a good job. He did. He re he really did. He showed he had great legs and uh, he was able to move and and uh, throw some counter shots. So you got to give him a lot of credit uh, for that fight. So I I think Danny is going to beat. I, I, we said the whole time he was the second best middleweight, and I still I don't see any. He was in consensus the number two yeah. ranked middleweight yeah. behind Golovkin by every credible yeah. boxing yeah. source. Yeah, publication see, and writer with the loss i don't see that changing i think he beats everyone else in the middleweight division right now no i think he proved it yeah. with yeah. his performance against golovkin let me ask you on april 22nd uh hilberto ramirez is defending his title at yeah. stub hub center it's a triple we'll, header are you going to be there you can tell your fans triple g might make a stub hub appearance. i was going to ask that so so golovkin might be <laughs> he's, there he's to, to kind of scout he's yeah. a big fan at the i mean he's a big uh uh He's a fight favorite. fan. He's yeah. a fan favorite. And they love him there. The, uh, Remember when you the first took him there? Yeah. Well, we broke uh, yeah. broke uh, the attendance record when Gennady fought there. Yeah, it was actually, it was overflowed. You guys yeah. built uh, bleachers. <laughs> That's for, what people for... couldn't understand. They were saying, like, I bought all the tickets. <laughs> yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. there's so many, there's so much. Uh, 
Hey, somebody's <laughs> asking, will Triple G be at the Box Fan Expo? I guess that's something that's happening in Vegas around the time of the Canelo yeah, Chavez Jr. Before. fight. Yeah, he's going to be in training uh, during that, so he's okay. Not, he's not going to be there. We might no. have some. We might have some Triple G merchandise uh, up there, but uh, I, I don't think uh, he's gonna get the papers. Ass Ward versus Triple G? Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> could it ever happen now that Ward's at, at light heavyweight? I think it could at 168 pounds if they both like met in the middle. I, I think we could. Uh, you know, there was a, this whole thing that was made about this offer that uh, that Ward made, but I mean, it just uh, it wasn't realistic at the time. That was before the David Lemieux fight. Yeah, before no. the Lemieux fight. Gennady was, the, I mean, I kind of went through the whole scenario. Gennady yeah, we've was, gone through this so many times. It was a mandatory for Cotto Canelo, which was a, a much bigger fight, and uh, and at 160 pounds. And then, uh, you know, my response to them was, you know, if, if Andre's still at 168 pounds, you know, if uh, if Gennady beats Lemieux and beats uh, the winner of Cotto Canelo, then, then we can talk about it. Listen, even when there's fighters who have the same manager, advisor, promoters, when they're big-time fighters, it takes months to make those fights. Yep. I mean, it took months for Keith Thurman well, especially and, 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 and Sean Porter or Danny Garcia to make their fights. And they've got the same damn advisor. Yep. And they're not that high profile oh, and they're as, as a Ward or, or a Golovkin. It takes months. So if there was ever any real negotiations between Andre Ward and Gennady Golovkin, people... <laughs> You'd have been hearing about it. I mean, let's be real here. It would it, That would be a fight months in the making. Yep. And quite frankly, at that time, Golovkin didn't have months to just sit out and, and, and play grab ass with, with Team Ward and Rock Nation. And Ward was coming off of almost two years away from the sport. He needed to knock Rust off. Yeah. That's all there is well, to that, it. People need were, to leave it alone. They were saying it was going to be like the next year and everything like that. But, you know, you can't, uh, you, you can't plan for, for that. And, uh, you know, I mean, look, Andre's got his hands full with the rematch with uh, Kovalev now, if that, if that happens. And then if, look, if he can beat Kovalev twice and if Gennady makes a couple more defenses. Yeah, then, let, 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 let Golovkin fight once at 168. Jesus, before going to light heavyweight. <laughs> well, the, the, uh, uh, the question is if Andre even could make 168 anymore. So that's, I don't think that's, he can. That's yeah. There, so. But, I, what, you know, I don't know. Speaking of weight, somebody asked, is, are there any, uh, are there any, Credible sources as to how much Jacobs actually weighed on fight night. The credible source was he, he weighed 176. That came from Victor Conte, uh, 176 uh, in the morning of uh, right. Saturday morning. So you got to figure he put on another, you know, five or ten pounds after that. Um, yeah, so about two, 180. Yeah, 181. Two, two full days of uh, yes rehydration from right nine o'clock Friday morning till eleven thirty. That's Saturday. right. But you know, yeah. you can, on the East Coast that. people, the, those main event guys, they fight late. Yeah. They yeah. fight round midnight. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. <laughs> Would Triple G fight Charlo? Hmm. Uh, Charlo's a great guy. He just moved up to 160 pounds. Yeah. Uh, he should actually have at least one fight against a legitimate yeah, middleweight I mean, first, uh, right? I, I don't think it's realistic to fight him straight away. But if he look, if he beats a couple of guys, if he beats yeah. some of the guys that uh, that Gennady had beaten, whether it's a Lemieux or you know some of those uh, Murray or, or yeah. you know, some of the solid guys, then. Uh, then uh, I hear they might make the elimination fight with Charlo and Highland, so that would be a good win. Right, a good win for him. Well, then that would be a way to go about doing it. Become a mandatory for one of the sanctioning yep. body belts that Golovkin holds, and you got your fight. Yep. Is Eubank is it is that fight still possible? <laughs> that was get to paper. Look, I think Eubank there. <laughs> I like his father. I think he's very entertaining. Uh, I, I just don't know how realistic uh, a fight like that uh, is. You know, we tried to do that. Yeah. We, we were negotiating over a month with uh, Eddie Hearn for that fight, and uh, he couldn't get them to, to agree. So I'm not sure what would change now. Uh, maybe they also think maybe Gennady is now uh, human uh, yeah. and getting older. So, you know, that's why I think people are going to start uh, looking before when they were running away. Now they're, they're, they're looking. He's going to be 35 next, next month. He, he didn't have the knockout, so maybe they're gonna, like I said, when they have more courage, then the financial demands start coming back into uh, into reality. And that's why I figure, you know, with the Canelo fight, you know, they gotta look if Canelo can beat Chavez easily, then uh, they gotta think that uh, Canelo's chances are, are very good against. Yeah, him. and somebody just asked, well, what if Canelo loses to Chavez? And then there's no Canelo fight. And yeah. there'll be a Chavez. Maybe fight, there'll so. be a Chavez but they, fight. I know they have a rematch clause in there too, so right. it just depends if they want the rematch. If Chavez, look, Chavez is going to be much bigger than Canelo, also. Well, I don't know. Canelo puts on a lot of weight too. He does. So, sure. You know, they're both going to be uh, a lot heavier than 160 pounds. 
that night or 164. So. And there are still markets you, you would like to break in with Golovkin. I know Texas is one of them. Texas, and so yeah. if you guys were to fight uh, a Chavez Jr. or a Gilberto Ramirez, perhaps that would be in Texas. Yeah. And somebody uh, also asked uh, earlier, and this may or may not ever happen, but uh, there's a Japanese middleweight contender, uh, Murata. Well, Murata's very if, good. Yeah, he could fight. You've he, seen him. Yeah. He can fight. So if he wins the WBA regular title, he would be, or no, is there no or interim title, well, whatever. He's going to fight maybe Indom for like a high yeah. position in the WBA. Yeah, my understanding is they got rid of the regular title. That was the right. whole elimination process right. of making uh, Jacobs and Golovkin. Okay, but, uh, so like maybe Murata's not fighting Endom for a title, but maybe for a mandatory yeah, position I'm within not, the WBA. I'm not sure on, on that one. But would uh, you guys go to the Tokyo Dome? Somebody that, said that. Would, that. A, would you go to Tokyo? That would be a huge fight in. Uh, in that would Japan. be a vacation for Dougie. I would. A, I would go there two weeks in advance. We have a great relationship with uh, Mr. Honda and with uh, taking promotions. That's and, right. Uh, and you guys uh, both. Murata actually. Yeah, you guys uh, both moved Chocolatito yeah, Gonzalez, yeah. right? And uh, Murata actually was in uh, the training camp with Gennady and with uh, Abel Sanchez for a while, so they know each other. And uh, like I said, he's a he's a great fighter, and, and uh, that would be a huge fight in uh, in Japan. Yeah. All right. So there's there's still options at, at, at middleweight. Everyone wants them to go up and wait, but you know what? There's there's it's uh, you can be a real world champion at middleweight and fight. In Kazakhstan, you could fight in the UK. Maybe there's a fight in Japan. There's fights in other parts of uh, yeah. America. Uh, I mean, as well. the, the Eubank fight. The, you know, there, there's still some big. You know, obviously, Canelo is, is the biggest fight. So there's some. There's some. You know, the Saunders fight. There's some great names now at the middleweight division that that he couldn't fight. Charlo just moved up. Uh, you know, the problem when Gennady was tearing through everyone, no one wanted to fight him. None right. of the big names wanted to fight him. And then you know, the, you know, that's where Pacquiao had a. I look at the careers of, of Manny and Gennady as very similar. The advantage that Gennady, uh, Pacquiao had was that uh, he got some, you know, the, the great Mexican names to yes. fight him. You know, he had the fights with uh, Eric Because little guys fight each other. Yeah, Eric Morales, <laughs> Barrera. It's the only yeah, way they're going to make some money. Their financial demands on Damn that. straight. When yeah. you're a featherweight and a junior lightweight, yeah. you're going to fight the fight best. Because guys. Look at Chuck Latito's yeah. uh, resume. You know, Jesus. That, uh, yeah. You know, no soft touches. He fought Quadras. He fought... Uh, you know, Valoria, he fought, he just fought Sistercat. I mean, he's, yeah. uh, he's been in tough fights the whole, the oh, he's whole been time. in tough fights going back to his first title win. It's straw weight. Yeah. People don't realize that. Estrada. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, yeah. He's, yeah. And he, yeah. Yeah. And that was, that was a great well, fight. Those guys fight because the, 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 they, they need, only way you're going to make money. those fights yeah. in order to make some money. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. bigger guys have options, but, um, it looks like. I don't know. I, I think it's going to be the, the, tre the credit you guys have is when you couldn't get big names. You stayed just kept busy. Fighting, yeah, we you, even you, went to Monte Carlo. Yeah, you kept a busy schedule, right? Yeah, fought in England. You know, look, a lot of fighters don't want to travel to fight uh, to fight in a different countries. One thing, you know, flying from LA and fighting New York against Danny Jacobs is from New York, right? But uh, you know, to fly to the UK, you know, a lot of people minimize that whole thing. Oh, it's, it's a long ass trip. You got the jet lag. You it got, kills it's, you. It's a different food. You're living in a hotel. Uh, you know, and then you're fighting in front of their home fans. Yes. You don't know what's going to happen with the judges. You know, you know. You look at the Chuck Now, fight. listen. There's a reason why some of uh, the great American fighters of, of recent times never left the yeah. country. Yeah. They just didn't. They stayed at home. Well, even Ward with the Froch, you know, fight. You know, they were talking about okay, let's do the rematch in, in England. And he said he wouldn't. He wouldn't go to. Well, Ward wouldn't travel during the Super Six <laughs> tournament, and yeah. it was that was contractual. Yeah. They were supposed to do that, but they, you know, Ward didn't play by those rules in that yeah. uh, that tournament. But, but you know, it that, is what it is. That's the difference with Gennady. Is he, he's just he so confident, and he he had so many amateur fights that he doesn't care where where he fights. But it definitely takes it in consideration. Look. With the Chocotito fight, if one of those uh, two judges that gave it to uh, Sisterkett, if one of those judges had one point for Chocotito, he would have kept his titles. Yeah, so he you, should you have see, kept him, by the way. You see how big, uh, you know, just one point makes in someone's career. Yeah, so, yeah, folks don't like to take risks, but, yeah, you know, it looks like it's, it's, it's working out. It was uh, Vladimir, Vladimir yeah. Klitschko. Vladimir, 41 yeah, or 40? 41. If you talk oh, about big wow. fights, that's a big fight. I was right. telling Dave, I like his confidence. I've been following his uh, social media. I'm, I'm starting to feel him. Maybe he's, uh, Vladimir is he's winning me over with the he's with, driven with his to, mood. He's driven to be a uh, heavyweight champion again, take his titles back. I mean, Anthony Joshua, what can you say about him? He's, he's knocking everybody out. And he's the Olympic uh, champion. Vladimir also won the Olympic gold medalist in uh, in 96. Uh, that's right. And... Uh, so that's that classic example of the uh, proven veteran, experienced veteran versus the young guy coming up. I personally think it's a little bit too soon 
for Joshua. I think he's right. got a tremendous future. guy doesn't have 20 fights yet, and he still hasn't fought the 10 round distance. It's such a big jump from uh, Vladimir to uh, you know the other guys he's been fighting. But at the same time, you know if you're knocking everyone out, you know Eddie Hearn's done a masterful job with uh, moving his career. He's selling out yeah. the arenas, and now he's going to sell out to Wembley Stadium. Yeah. So it's uh, that that's a when you talk about a huge fight, two huge guys, both chiseled, great great condition. They're almost mirror images of each other as far yeah. as you're physically. Oh, they look and, like uh, superheroes. Yeah. Now, yeah. when when you take a fighter to the UK and it's uh, a co-promotion with Eddie Hearn mm -hmm. and it's uh, you know it's at a UK venue, does Hearn do the heavy lifting of the the he promotion? Does, uh, yeah, like, all the all the logistics, so <clears throat> right. organizing with the arena and uh, the, the the production. You know, Sky does the. Uh, the television production so so that makes it in one sense it makes it easier as far as you don't have to organize everything like we did in new york i think new york is one of the toughest places logistics oh my god yeah logistic wise with the hotels with the airport with the transportation you know we had the snowstorm <laughs> during fight a lot week. of stuff happens yeah you know, but uh, but they're great fans in in uh, in new york and uh, and in uh, in the uk eddie does uh, you know most of the the, the local uh, organization um, which makes it easier for us it's just uh, you know going